My favorite all-time music venue. First show I saw there, one of my favorites, saw Spirit, a band that at that point in their career, 1970, mainly playing arenas, but they'd come do four nights of the bear, just sort of like a shakedown cruise, and because they loved it so much. And sitting four feet away from your heroes was great. And since then, saw everybody up through Patti Smith, Tom Waits. Uh, I didn't see Bukowski, but it threw up on a friend of mine's shoes there. All sorts of good stuff. Joe Walsh, David Lindley. Well, I saw Peter Tosh. Country Joe and the Fish, Linda Ronstadt. Uh, we used to hang out there uh, when we were in high school. In fact, we uh, even uh, hired a Honk to play our senior prom. They were children too then, in 70 something. I have lots of memories, whether it was Steve Martin and taking the entire audience across the street to the pier to hitchhike on, on PCH and get a ride for all the entire audience. My first girlfriend, Wendy Watson, uh, uh, and I went and saw The Love and Spoonful in 1966, I think it was, and, uh, and uh, we, we're still good friends and we still email each other back and forth. I told her I was involved in this thing and she was like, oh my God, remember Love and Spoonful? I'm like, yeah, I do. We were practically, we were sitting in the very front row and uh, John Sebastian was playing the harpsichord and just killing it and man, I got the bug for concerts right then and there. And, Lo and behold, here I am 40 years later in the concert business for the last 35 years anyway. I used to sneak in the back alley and you know, see people like uh, The Doors, uh, Last Night, <laughs> you know, who else did I see? I saw a lot of different uh, venues. I was only like you know, 12, 13 years old, but I got it. You could sneak in the back and uh, listen to it all. And it was great. I met my husband at the Golden Bear. We've been married for 30 years, so I think that's a pretty good memory. I went to the Golden Bear the first time when I was 13 years old. I saw the Steve Morse Band and the Dixie Dregs. I was just a little kid, and I didn't have tickets for the second show, so when the drummer saw me hanging around outside, he brought me in the back door, through the kitchen, into the, into the dressing room, backstage area. And for a 13-year-old kid, it was very moving. They introduced the band and I walked out into the showroom with the band. That was the beginning of my love affair with the Golden Bear. Just seeing all the really good the entertainment, being a cocktail waitress, being the always the high girl, the best sales, best sales. Um, one of my favorites was BB King requested me as his waitress a lot in Hoyt Axton. And um, everything about it was just very fond memories. I did meet my ex-husband there too. <laughs> I used to, I was working at the Ruben Ely as a dishwasher and I used to sneak in the back door of the Golden Bear all the time and because I, I was rooming with some of the guys that worked there. Then finally Dell said, you know, if you're here all the time, I might as well put you to work. How, you, want, you want a job here? And I said, sure. So I, I became the cook of the Golden Bear, turned 21 cooking for Ian and Sylvia in 1965. The Bear never got a proper send off when it closed 23 years ago. So let's take the opportunity tonight to show them their thanks and appreciation and you're going to really like this show tonight. Where you are. This is wonderful. This is just, you know, awesome that the city was able to allow this event to occur for their centennial. It's been like 25 years since the old club ran, and I couldn't wait. So I'm excited, needless to say, and I just feel that this is going to recreate a moment in time. I heard some people talking just the other night.
they should get busy right now because of the incredible event we put on here tonight and build another golden bear right here in Huntington Beach so we can get back uh, that fantastic energy that this city should really have. And where are you going? Whoosh, out into the light, out into the light, into the sun, into the oneness of all creation and you become one with the energy. The energy is you, you are the energy and then you Break on through to the other side. Wonderful to be here. It's, uh, it's great. The uh, uh, Golden Bear was a fabulous place to play. And uh, it's a uh, real honor to be back at the reunion and 100 years of Huntington Beach. That's amazing, too, to think that all of this started 100 years ago. So we're having a great time. Everybody's having fun. Chased our pleasures here, dug our treasures there. should be built again, but with reinforced masonry, instead of unreinforced masonry like it used to be, <laughs> and without the ghost, because there used to be a ghost there. So, but it was an incredible place, and, the, and a lot of people played there very early on. <laughs> A guy named George Neek has bought it in 1966, ran it into the 70s, and those that's when all the people, Janis Joplin, Butterfield, main acts played there. Um, and in the 1970s, it was purchased by the Babaraki Trio. It's, it's Rick Babaraki, Chuck Babaraki, and Carol Babaraki. And that trio ran the, the pinnacle of the Golden Bear. Um, the, the, the greatest period the Golden Bear saw, um, as far as the music period, and it's from 1974 to 1986, um, until it closed down and was torn down. We, we struggled for the first couple of months. I mean, I remember the first band uh, that asked us where our monitor speakers were. I said, monitors? What are those? He said, speakers that face us so we can hear ourselves. And I said, why? You don't play loud enough? And, I mean, we, didn't, we really didn't know anything about the business when we got started. But we learned real quickly.
in 1967, a magazine named Steve Noonan is one of the Orange County Three, a trio of talents predicted to reach national fame. The other two names were Jackson Brown and Tim Buckley. His 1968 album introduced the world to Jackson's song as well as Noonan's. The Nitty Gritty Dirt Band had its first hit in 1967. It was Noonan's Buy It For Me The Rain. He's only gotten better with time. That's true also. Please give a warm Golden Bear welcome to Steve Noonan. There's a furry little bat flying around my room, keeping me on target. It's that little chirp, but you can't quite hear it. Unless, of course, you hear it. And then in that sound, there is a dance that we can learn, a special trance to take it home. It can be most any place that you would like it to be. We can plant a garden and climb an ancient tree. Find a place to set our spirits free. There's a little stream in my life, full of gifts and treasures, bringing peace and taking strife. Bear was a, a real cornerstone in this town. Musically, uh, it was a very important part of the Southern California music scene, but for Huntington Beach, it was a very important part of Huntington Beach. And I think for those of us who grew up in the uh, Southern California area, I'm from Long Beach, and uh, there were a number of places that we frequented based upon what we got to do socially, and that involved music. Um, you could go to the Rendezvous and see Dick Dale. Uh, you could go to the airport club and dance. You could go to the prison of Dan Socrates. Dean and Dean were around then too. Yeah, yep, sorry that Dean Torrance isn't here tonight, yeah. but he's out working. You could go to uh, the Rouge et Noir in mm -hmm. Seal Beach. Mm -hmm. There were a number of places, but there was nothing that was as good as the bear. The bear was it. Yeah, back in high school, uh, back in 74, uh, down in Edison, one night we all got together and uh, came down to the Golden Bear, saw Blondie uh, back then. Uh, after that, in the early 80s, a friend of ours, uh, she worked for the bear uh, as a bartender, so we used to come in the side door. Uh, got to see quite a few bands. Uh, it was very interesting, had a great time. Uh, that's why I'm here tonight, just to uh, reminisce and uh, see all the uh, different people and the events that are happening tonight. The first flyer from the very first month of operation that Rick and I had the club. We had Jimmy Witherspoon on uh, May 31st, followed the following week by the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, this is the CK opening for him. Honk, James Brown and Stone Ground with Mark Turnbull opening. Honk, the Dan Whaley opening, and, and Hoot Nights. That was the very first, the very first one. That was 1960. 1974. 74? Yeah, we had bought it. In oh, that was when you got it. But yeah, before when that, we got it. Before yeah, that, it was yeah. Right. That's when when we bought it. That was the very first choir. So Hoot Night was always like a tradition. Hoot Night was a tradition. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's a, a night of free entertainment. You this can't argue with it. We used to know this dishwasher there, and he, he told us he was going to join the biggest band in the world, and his name was Peter Tork. <laughs> God damn it! Right? It's <laughs> crazy. Much better than washing the dishes at the bear. It has 
I got this is, I won't tell you a bunch of golden bear stories because most of them we can't tell on stage anyway. But uh, we got our first gig there as a band in June of 1966, opening for the Sir Douglas Quintet. <laughs> And the, the paper misprinted it. There was a typo. It said, opening act, the nitty gritty dirt man. <laughs> what's, that, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> when you bought a ticket to the Golden Bear, you saw a great show. It didn't gouge you, and you had a blast. Couldn't be happier. Just like the old days, baby. Fantastic. It was wonderful. Good songs, good music. I, it was awesome. awesome. Very, very good show. It's almost sad to see it coming to an end.